Flip monsters are a type of card which basically have the rules that when they're flipped face up, they activate one of their effects designated by flip, and is one of the oldest types of effects of monsters in the game. In this list, we'll be going over 10 of the worst ones. And at number 10, we have the Castle of Dark Illusions. This card has a flip effect where you immediately increase the attack and defense of all zombie monsters of the field by 200. Then it has a continuous effect where after it's been flipped face up, it will increase the attack and defense of all zombie monsters in the field by 200 during each of the standby phases until the fourth turn after this card has been activated. So it's a unique card in a whole bunch of different ways. There's not too many cards which continue to provide a permanent attack boost for a set number of turns. And there's not too many cards which don't have a round even number for its attack and defense. As the Castle of Dark Illusions has 920 attack and 1930 defense. Now the effects of the card are kind of mediocre as the card itself is fiend type so it doesn't benefit from its own attack increase, and having to flip a face up monster then keep it alive in order to provide a minor attack boost every turn is not a big deal. However, it does have a decently high defense at 1930, which is just high enough for it to be kind of a wall to a lot of level 4 lower monsters. So there is a chance it could be used as a high defense monster in a low power level version of the game. And at number 9 we have Big Eye. This card has the effect where you can reveal the top 5 cards of your deck and then place them back on top of your deck in whatever order you want. So it's kind of like a slower version of Card Advance, which is a spell card which has the same exact effect, except it also provides an additional tribute summon for the turn and doesn't require you to set a monster and then wait for it to flip up. Basically, normal spell cards with the same effects as flip monsters are just better in every way, and Card Advance doesn't see any competitive play at all. And Card Advance has a lot more applications too. Even if you don't care about rearranging the top 5 cards of your deck, gaining an additional tribute summon seems like it'd be really good in some decks. It's just not good enough. And Big Eye only has the weaker version of the card's effect. Basically, only being able to rearrange the top 5 cards of your deck isn't an effect which advances the game state. There are definitely some cards which rely on knowing what's on top of your deck, like maybe Archfiend's Oath, which allows you to add the top card of your deck to your hand if you're able to guess it correctly, or even Reversal Quiz, which was used in some meta decks in the past. It's just those cards don't need a slow flip monster like Big Eye in order to activate them, when they can instead not use card advance either to do the same thing easier. And at number 8 we have Dark Eyes Illusionist. This card has the full effect where you can target one monster in the field and make it so it can't attack as long as this card is face up on the field, which means it has to survive a battle before it can stop a monster from attacking. And with only 1400 defense baseline, you're going to have to protect this card with something like maybe a Catapult Zone or a Wabuku-like card. And the effect is just to simply stop one monster from attacking while keeping a low-statted monster on the field, which isn't that strong of an effect. It would be much better to just destroy the card with something like a Maneater Bug, or at least negate the effects of the monster too, like with Fiendish Chain. But simply preventing a monster from attacking doesn't really accomplish much especially when the card is so easy to remove from the field in order to allow the monster to attack again. And at number 7 we have Death's Feral Imp. This card has the flip effect where you can return one card in your graveyard back to your deck. Now, technically, being able to return a card to your deck is not half bad in some circumstances. Like if you have a Garnet that you want to use again but don't want to play more than one copy in your deck, or you have a single copy of a card in your deck that you want to reuse again, like maybe a Salomon Great Gazelle. The problem is that it's much easier to just use something that's not a slow flip effect monster in order to accomplish something like this. Like maybe the Transmigration Prophecy, which allows you to return two cards from either graveyard back to the deck. Which means you can use it to deny your opponent of resources in their graveyard, while also returning one card in your graveyard back to your deck if you want. And even the Transmigration Prophecy is a slow trap card. It's still faster than a flip effect monster, who also has to wait to turn anyway and might get destroyed in the battle phase. There is a saving grace with Death's Feral Imp though. Its stats aren't half bad. It might actually survive being attacked with 1800 defense and it has a decent-ish 1600 attack stat line for having that decent-ish high defense. Its stats are still kind of mediocre but definitely higher than what a normal flip monster might have. So if this card is just used for its stats for whatever reason, the effect of shuffling one card back into the deck might still not be useful as most archetypes don't really care, outside of very specific circumstances where they definitely are not going to play Death's Feral Imp to do it. And most likely we'll just use the Transmigration Prophecy or Pot of Avarice. And at number 6 we have Bite Shoes. This card has the flip effect where you can change the attack or defense position of one face-up monster on the field, but that card must remain face up. 
which is just reminder text to signify how old the card really is, when they still used to add reminder text to monster effects before problem solving card text was added. So basically what this card does is just change the battle position of a phase up monster and that's it. So think of it like the first effective enemy controller. However, that first effective enemy controller attached to a low statted flip monster, which is much slower than enemy controller. So this is another use of a card with a technically good effect, just very underpowered, and generally flip monsters need to be really good in order to see play. And even then, they might not. To give you an idea of just how unviable flip monsters are in meta decks, we have a card like Morphine Jar at one copy in the game. Morphine Jar has the effect to discard both players' hands, and then both players draw five cards. So if you have no cards in your hand, then it just simply allows you to draw five new cards, which is insanely good. This has got to be one of the strongest draw effects in the game, and it's perfectly legal to play in decks, and no one touches it. So a card with a pretty mediocre effect like Bite Shoes is obviously not going to be seen in any play either. And at number five, we have Weather Report. This is a card which has anti-support for Swords of Revealing Light as it basically has the effect that when it's flipped face up, you can destroy all of your opponent's swords or villain line in the field, and then you can perform your next battle phase twice. And this is one of the only two cards in the game that allow a player to perform a battle phase twice, with the other being a terrible card called an Unfortunate Report, which allows your opponent to conduct the next battle phase twice. And because these two cards exist, every card which allows a monster to attack multiple times has to specify that it works during the battle phases, plural instead of the battle phase, singular. And Weather Report and an Unfortunate Report see absolutely zero play. And it's kind of funny that these bad cards have influenced proper problem-solving card text for years to come. Now, there is technically ways to make use of Weather Report, like in the early days of the game when people were playing Swords of Revealing Light a lot, and it was even on the ban list for a bit because of how much use it saw, as it basically allows you to stall out three battle phases. And you can even just give your opponent the Swords of Revealing Light and bait your opponent into using it, so that you can destroy it with Weather Report in order to gain two battle phases for yourself. It's not a very good combo to do, but it is technically something you can do in order to force the activation of its effect. The effect itself is good. The activation requirement for it though is one you'll probably never actually accomplish in a regular duel, unless you're playing in a limited format where Swords of Revealing Light is running around rampant, or if you just find your way to give your opponent Swords of Revealing Light through something like a Graceful Tear, for example. And at number 4, we have Jigen Bakudan. This monster has the effect where after it's flipped face up, and if it survives until your next standby phase, you get to destroy all the monsters on your side of the field in order to inflict a half of their attack to your opponent as damage. Now, when I originally made this video, I incorrectly read the effect as destroying all of your opponent's monsters, and still put it on this list because it's not even a good flip effect monster if it has a blazing mirror force like effect. Then, when it was pointed out to me in the comments that I completely misread the card, I realized that it was even worse. Basically, because the main use of this card is trying to deal burn damage to your opponent at the cost of destroying maybe some high attack monsters on your side of the field. However, even if you wanted to use it for its burn potential, you'd have to go through the hassle that is flip monsters trying to survive a battle phase to gain their effects, like Dark Eyes Illusionist. So you would need extra support with cards like Catapult Zone or Wabaku to keep it alive, while also hoping your opponent doesn't just destroy it by card effects during their turn, or all the rest of your monsters. Then, during your next turn, you get to finally resolve its effect and destroy all of your monsters anyway for a bit of burn damage. Since the effect is so terrible, you could actually just give the card to your opponent with a creature swap or reverse reuse, and then just attack into the card with a monster less than 1,000 attack, and let it destroy all of your opponent's monsters, which is still an incredibly inefficient way to destroy all of your opponent's monsters, but is definitely a useful application of the card if you really just want to use it. And at number 3, we have Dragon Piper. This card has the flip effect where you can destroy all face up dragon capture jars in the field. And then, if you destroy any, you get to change all face up dragon type monsters in the field to attack position. Dragon Capture Jar is a floodgate which changes all dragon type monsters in the field to defense position and then makes it so they cannot change their battle positions. So, they're essentially stuck in defense position and can't attack. Back in the real early days of Yu Gi Oh!, like before we had modern rules, even before Master Rule 1, and Blue Eyes White Dragon was the strongest monster in the game and didn't require tributes to be brought out, Dragon Capture Jar was a legitimate floodgate and one of the only trap cards in the game at the time. So having a Dragon Piper to destroy Dragon Capture Jar was almost equivalent to allowing it to destroy a trap card, since Dragon Capture Jar was like one of only two, if not the only trap card in the game in that incredibly early format, which probably 
predates Yu-Gi-Oh itself. However, I don't think Dragon Piper was in that format. I'm pretty sure Dragon Piper was released afterwards in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, and it just has its effect because of anime lore reasons, which is why it's incredibly specific and not very good, because Dragon Capture Jar isn't very good. However, Dragon Piper does have decently high-ish defense, which was a reason to play some cards back in the day, so at least it had that 1800 defense going for it, which is better than its nearly useless effect. And at number two, we have the Stern Mystic. This card has the full effect where you can reveal all face down cards in the field and then return them to their original positions. So just being able to gain knowledge on face down cards in the field is technically a positive effect. It's just like one of the least impactful ones you can do if you don't actually do something else on top of it. So usually cards whose sole effect is just looking at your opponent's cards will find their way into my top 10 worst of lists because gaining information is useful but only if you can gain that information while doing something else like a pointer the red lotus. A pointer the red lotus seems like it would be a useless card because it requires you to pay 2000 life points revealing your hand to your opponent and then it just allows you to look at your opponent's hand and banish one of their cards temporarily. However, that's incredibly good and it sees competitive play. The stern mystic just has one of the weakest technically positive effects out of all the flip effect monsters. However, the number one spot has a nearly detrimental one. And at number one, we have Fire Sorcerer. This card has the effect that when it's flipped face up, you can randomly banish two cards from your hand to then inflict 800 points of damage to your opponent's life points. Now, going minus two for 800 points of burn damage is terrible, even when this card first came out. Generally, a card doesn't do good burn damage unless it's at least 1,000 or higher, or if you're able to inflict burn damage without some kind of loss of advantage, but this card doesn't really pass any of those hurdles. However, because its effect is so incredibly terrible, it's actually an excellent card to give to your opponent. You see, flip effects are mandatory. You can't choose to not activate flip effects once it happens. So if you simply give your opponent a face down fire sorcerer with something like creature swap or reverse reuse and then attack into fire sorcerer, your opponent will be forced to banish two random cards from their hand in order to inflict 800 points of damage to you. And that exchange is actually incredibly good. The only problem is having to give the card to your opponent. But with Reverse Reuse, you can give your opponent two face down flip monsters from your graveyard. So if you get two Fire Sorcerers in your graveyard and then give them to your opponent with Reverse Reuse, you can snipe four cards from your opponent's hand by attacking into both of the Fire Sorcerers. You know a card is bad when it's really good to give the card to your opponent. And I'm pretty sure Fire Sorcerer was not created to be given to your opponent. I'm pretty sure its full intention was to inflict that burn damage, which is why it's number one on this list. It was kind of made in the early days of the game before they got down how much you should discard for an effect like this, but it unintentionally made it an excellent card to just give to your opponent. Alright, and that's the list. As always, if you think there's any other cards I missed that should have definitely been on the list, or if you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Also remember to don't not to not subscribe.